Hey, what's up guys? This is Captain Cook and I'm here with another quick Rust video guide. Today I'll be covering 50 random tips that'll hopefully be able to help out players of all skill levels. But before we begin, I'd ask that if this video helps you out, please drop a like. And even if you did know all the tips, but think it might be able to help out somebody else, drop a like anyways. It'll definitely make this video easier to find for other players. And as always, subscribe for more gaming, guides, and giveaways. In my opinion, knowing this tip is a must for everybody because it can make it much easier to find items lost in the grass. So what you're going to want to do is head on over to your Rust config folder, open it up with a notepad, and then change the grass displays function to true. It allows you to flatten the grass when you walk on it and it makes items and traps much easier to spot. As long as you don't mind losing a little bit of charcoal, there is a best way to smelt resources in a furnace. Just make sure that you put one in each of the process materials in the three empty slots so that way the resources will distribute evenly and the slots won't be consumed by charcoal. This process eliminates wood waste and it maximizes the amount of resources being processed. If somebody is camping your door and you have the security of an airlock behind you, you can take advantage of the element in surprise and take them with a bow or another gun. While painting, you can right click on your mouse to rotate a canvas and you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And to prevent people from vandalizing your art, you can lock a painting by holding the E key. And to whoever ends up snagging the steam code, I really hope you enjoy it and hope you can find a great deal for the lunar sale that ends on Friday. This is just a way for me to thank some of my earliest subscribers for being so supportive for the rest videos I've been able to put out so far. You can draw on a map by right clicking on your mouse. The best way to get better at aiming is just to practice, and that's like all things to be honest. But that's why a lot of people like me prefer to use bows over guns, just because I've gotten so much more practice with a bow and it just feels so much more natural. But if you want to practice with more high-end weapons like bolts and AKs, without risking them on your own server, you can play on a battlefield server in the Mana tab. You basically just spawn in with a ton of weapons and just fight a bunch of people. As a bonus tip, there will always be rooftop campers even in battlefield. But crouching does reduce sway when you're aiming down sight. You don't need a 4 times scope for this to take effect. You can do it with just a regular weapon or you can even do it with a bow as well. But since there's not really much risk in a battlefield server, you might want to try out a battle royale server to simulate those high intensity and high pressure situations. It'll get you jumping a little bit and it's kind of the closest thing you, get, you can get to a real fight. If you want to display your frames per second on screen, you can use the steam overlay feature or if you want them to be a little bit larger, you can use the Rust command in the console, perf1. It's always good practice to have a spare hammer and extra materials in your loot room, so that way you can repair the walls, ceilings, and foundations if you happen to get live raids. In Rust Asia a few weeks ago, I got raided the day before a wipe, but I left my hammer in the other room so I couldn't stop the raid. I didn't lose much, but it was preventable, and it's kind of pretty frustrating. I'm sure most people know this one, but you can auto sprint after holding the shift key for a few seconds. When you let go you'll automatically run. And you can also access your inventory while doing this. This allows you to move items in and out of your hotbar. So if you need to get like a spear for example, or if you need to move some bandages down, or you want to kind of organize things a little bit, you have that ability. If you're far away from your base and you're farming by yourself or in a small group, you can stash your loot to minimize the loss if you get attacked. If you get killed you'll only lose a fraction of it instead of all of it. If you want to change your ammo type, you can do that by holding the reload key. So that way you can switch in between your regular high velocity explosive and incendiary ammo. You will die after too many failed code lock attempts, which helps prevent spam guessing and auto guessing scripts and hacks. That tip is a nice segue into our next one, just check out the dev blog frequently, so that way you're aware of the updates that are being implemented. For example, this week they're putting in the new code lock changes, and that's old footage even though it was just a couple of days ago. And I especially remember the horror that happened when people didn't know that bears got a buff. Everyone was just getting messed up by the bears that week. You were able to one shot barrels with crossbows, which means you can quickly move through a rad town. The cheapest way to acquire a specific blueprint is by using a research table, rather than using a BP book or library. For example, a bolt requires 1200 fragments and a bunch of luck but 1000 fragments for 100% on a BP table. But of course a BP table requires you to have the actual item and a fair way to acquire these items is by doing crafting trading. 
So basically what happens is you bag someone in your base and they craft you an item, then you craft them an item at their base. Some common trades are hatchets for picks, AKs for bolts, stone walls for gates, rockets or rocket launchers, and things like that. In order to prevent people from doing simple raids on you, which are raids that don't require explosives, just kind of take a look at your own base and look at it as if you were a raider. If you could find a weakness, then there are definitely other people who will be able to find them in your base. Especially when it comes to building privilege zones. And never assume that somebody won't exploit a weakness, because there's always somebody out there that's willing to pick a backwards wall, or bone club a backwards door, or in my case I was willing to arrow down this tool cupboard. Because people in Rush are just very relentless, and most easy raids could have been prevented just by taking a simple look at your own base. If you ever get absolutely lost and you definitely cannot find your base, this happens to me a lot when I make a loot storage base next to a monument. Just stash your gear in an identifiable spot, and then commit suicide, or you'll, in my case, end up dying. So thankfully I stashed all my good stuff. Then just kind of track your way back, and you can easily retrace your steps back to safety. Rust.io provides amazing high quality maps for every server on Rust. You can view monuments, zoom in and out, and save the map as a picture. But most importantly, you can give and receive a universal set of coordinates that everyone can understand. Weapon skins and item skins can be purchased or randomly acquired in game. Other than looking cooler than the rest of the peasants on your server, you can also use them as uniforms so that you can easily identify people in your group from a distance. If you're out and about and you can't make it back to your base, you can sleep underwater. You won't drown and you won't die from coldness while sleeping, and the deeper you are the harder it is for someone to find and kill you. Obviously the best time to join a new server is shortly after it wipes. But be careful because in the server descriptions, a lot of owners kind of fib about the reset date, so just ask politely in the in-game chat when the next and when the last wipe was. But the best time to start out on a new server is either on the first or third Thursday of the month. And this is because all servers are being forced to reset on the first Thursday of every month. In most large servers like Rustralasia for example, wipe on a weekly basis, and most medium servers like US West wipe bi-weekly. But some of the small servers do decide on wipe monthly, but there are always exceptions to these generalizations. And most popular servers have websites, so that way you can see specifics about the server, and most importantly you can get admin contact info if you need it. And most server websites also have a list of server rules, and they're always good to know so that way you don't accidentally get kicked or banned from the server. There's also a few creative servers out there. The ones I like to use are the intoxicated and US West creative servers. And basically what they do is they give you unlimited resources and they enable god mode for everybody. So that way you can kind of just mess around with base designs, kind of do stability stress tests if you're building some larger bases, and whatever else you may need. If you're outside with full gear and you hear the helicopter flying around, or you kind of just want to have a little bit of extra security, carry a bag around with you. So that way if you get attacked by the helicopter or other AI, or maybe even other players in certain scenarios, you can easily respawn where you died. When it comes to appearance, gates do have a strong and soft side, but both sides take equal damage, but that's probably going to change in the future, so keep an eye out for that. When hunting OP bears and wolves, you can place down a foundation to safely kill them. It takes 34 swings of a hatchet and 39 swings of a stone hatchet to finish off a tree. And this does seem like an obscure fact, but if you're like me and you enjoy trees around your base, for a little bit of privacy and just kind of for the aesthetic appeal for it, it's good to know. And if a new player tries to come near your base in your area and farm some wood, you'll only get a hit or two off of every tree and will probably move off to build in a new area. Whenever you walk through a bush, even when crouching, makes a distinct sound and it can easily give away your position or somebody else's position because it is hearable by other players. You can easily destroy a backwards door with bone clubs. It takes only 17 bone clubs for a sheet metal door and it does take a little bit more for an armored door but if you have a group of people you will just melt away the health points. All building items have a strong and soft side. For doors, handle on the right means soft, so that's what you want to see from the inside of your base. And when placing walls, do so from the inside out. The only barricade that's actual worthy of base defense is the metal barricade. It takes 500 metal fragments, and it's the only barricade that cannot be easily damaged by melee weapons. When pick raiding, don't stand too close to the wall. 
You want to stand back as far as possible to maximize the damage you cause. When you're placing items like furnaces and storage boxes, make sure that you don't place them too close to the wall because they can clip through and be looted from the other side. This can also happen with sleeping bodies, so make sure you try to sleep in the center of a foundation. If you happen to see one of your friends sleeping out through a wall, just kind of loot their body so that way no one else can get anything valuable. If you're in a bow fight that's pretty intense and neither of you are really getting any hit, close the distance and try to take them out with a melee weapon. Even if you have just like a stone hatchet or a metal hatchet, you can do a lot of damage. And if you have an item like a sword or a machete, you can finish them off in one or two hits. If you're a little busy in real life and need to take a break from rust, you can reset the decay timer in your base just by logging in for a few seconds and walking around your base. When standing still, you lose one hunger every 90 seconds and one thirst every 195 seconds. And this kind of seems a little bit weird, but it's very valuable information for if you want to AFK craft so that way you can know how long you can survive without coming back to your computer. Sometimes, and this happens a lot in the first day or two, you're going to face a decisive moment where you need to make a very important decision under pressure. And this happened to me on a wipe day on the US West server, and if I didn't seal off my roof, these guys would have definitely been able to get onto my roof and into my base, and they would have bypassed two of my airlocks, and they would have been very close to one of my loot rooms, so that if they happened to have explosives already, they could have easily gotten in. If you're bleeding out and don't have a band-aid or don't have enough time to bandage yourself, take a quick look at your surroundings and run for the nearest bush. It'll make it a lot less likely that people will find you and loot your body, and it'll give you a more fair chance of getting back what you lost. It's definitely more advantageous to play with more people, just because of simple math, but if you want to find a group to join, or you need extra people to join your group, check out the rest LFG on, the, on Reddit. It's very helpful and you can find a lot of great people to play with. Know your limits, but don't be afraid to push them. You'll never know what you're capable of if you never take any chances. Sometimes you need to have the attitude that you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. My final and most important tip is to just remember that Rust is a game. You should never feel miserable or forced when you're playing it, and a lot of players really fall into that trap where Rust becomes more of a job and less of a game. Not all aspects of it should be fun for everybody, and that's normal, like I personally hate farming, but you should never feel coerced into it, like a lot of people end up staying up late on school and work nights and it really just affects their real life. And at that point, Rust isn't fun anymore, it's an, it becomes an unhealthy obsession. And if you want to invest dozens of hours a week into it, that's great. But you should never feel forced to. Because you're definitely going to get raided at some point. And if you don't, the server's going to be wiped eventually. So just remember it's a game and have fun playing it.